I would say, let me share my screen. And now you should see the presentation. Maybe Raoul, can you give me a short feedback? Yes, I see it. Okay, great. Then I would say welcome and let's start and sorry for the technical difficulties. So it was a little bit complicated to enter this call. And yes, welcome to our talk to the topic, our journey in Drupal installation profile land. So that's a long title. I would say it's a complicated topic. So let's jump right in and at first introduce myself a little bit. My name is Philip Eger and I'm sales consultant at the public plan. So public plan is basically, basically developing software for the um, government and open institutions. So everything which is communal or department websites in Germany. Um, this is our business and as sales consultant, I'm something like the bridge between sales and consulting, obviously. And um, I uh, maybe a little bit to my uh, history, my career history. Um, I worked in product, product management a long time. And uh, then I was product owner at the public plan for um, the GovBot. It's an artificial intelligence system. So um, maybe th this may be interesting. And uh, yes, now I'm working as a sales consultant. And um, I think I can hand over to Raoul. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, from myself. My name is Raul Garcia, and I am senior software engineer uh, at Public Plan in Germany. I started uh, 20 years ago as developer programming desktop applications, but I realized uh, um, that it was not much funny. Then I opted, uh, uh, I discovered the, the world of the web development, and it was for me a new challenge to overcome. Uh, the front end was not really uh, interesting for me at this time, and I opted for the backend development. But in the last years, seven, eight years, uh, Frontend has awakened, uh, awakened uh, my interest. And nowadays, I, I have even, even learned React. So with Drupal, I'm working almost, almost 10 years. But I am part of the Drupal community around eight years uh, already. Uh, there, I don't make much noise, but uh, I try always to help uh, finding and fixing bugs uh, or testing patches, uh, reading documentation, or helping others in the Slack channel. Um, I'm Drupal 8 certified developer, and at Public Plan, I'm part of the core team that develops uh, and supports the distribution they go off. Uh, you can take a look at this distribution at drupal.org. That's, that's all from my part. Okay, great. Thank you, Raoul. Then I would say let's jump right in and talk about what we want to talk today. Um, we will start with what is the eGov. So the eGov is basically a Drupal distribution. I will talk about it later. And um, the eGov consists of a layer model, a special layer model, um, which we will discuss on this in this uh, slide and then uh, we'll talk or Raul will talk about the technical details <laughs> of the EGOF and um, yes we will look a little bit deeper and take the deep dive what's inside the system and then we will show a small demo of the department of the interior it's a ministry in North Rhine-Westphalia which is a special installation profile of the eGov. So this is basically um, a themed version of the eGov. And then we will take the big picture into consideration and we'll look a little bit, um, a little bit more far away into what are others doing and then uh, a little bit more visionary what comes next and what are the next steps we are doing in the EGOF here. So 
then let's start with the big picture overview about what is the EGOV. So we developed a content management system, especially for the public sector. So as I mentioned earlier, public plan is developing software, especially for the public sector. And we developed this, the EGOV as a content management system to face the unique challenges which are, um, are in, the, in the public sector here. So we have an open source system. It's operating on Drupal 8 and uh, Yes, I think this will be more clear if I show the layer model in a slide later. And we have a custom tailored software for authorities and their employees. So um, we, are, we are specialized for the public sector and these are very unique challenges here. So we had to make a few customizations for them. And we are able to create whole platforms and uh, for example the business services platform in north rhine westphalia so it's called in germany wirtschaft service portal it's basically something if you want to create a business or want to um, want to get your tax identification number then you can log in and have everything you want on this website so this could be an interesting use case. If you want to try it, then you can try it out. Uh, I think there is an English version under gewerbe.nrv. I think this could be very interesting here. So, okay, what are the benefits from the EGOV? And we have basically three different pillars here. So we have the citizens, the authorities, basically our um, consumers here and the editorial part. So for the citizens or the users, we have a very user-friendly and responsive front end. The performance is really good. Uh, the accessibility is, 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 is really high. And um, I think this is uh, self-explaining here. So we have different forms for newsletter reg registration and so on and so on different event calendars and uh, yes the more important part for our for authorities so uh, for example the the ministry of the interior which i will show later are uh, um, the coasts so we have no license costs here um, we are in uh, a continuous development pipeline so raul will show this later and uh, have very high security standards. So I think this could be interesting. And uh, yes, there are not only authorities, but also editors in um, this part here. And uh, I think very important here is the central media management capability, which I will show in a few slides later, I would say. Then let's talk about our layer model and get a little bit more technical. So we have, I will start this bottom up. So we have the EGOV as a base system and it's based on Drupal 8 and we have different modules. Uh, the EGOV consists of different modules. We have this Drupal 8 as a base and um, base modules and base themes. And we have, of course, a little bit demo content added there. And then we have the communal or resource content, which is relevant here for the ministries and the departments and so on. And um, there is on the second layer, the intranet, blogging capabilities, specialized procedures, and so on and so on. And the layers one and two, this is the part you see on the right side, uh, open sourced and centrally managed. So everybody can use it. If you, uh, if you Google uh, the EGOV, then you will get the source code. And this, of course, is uh, relevant here for performance and security reasons. And uh, yes, we have different content types developed, especially for the public sector here. And um, yes. 
you can look into the source code if you are interested in this. And then on top of this, we have layer three and layer three is closed source and it's called NRV Gov, NRV for North Rhine Westphalia. And it's the um, special layer for, yes, the departments of North Rhine Westphalia. And as you can see, we have different internet designs, additional functions, modules, and so on and so on. And um, yes, we have uh, on the left side, the intranet and on the right side, the internet layer. So the one is for the um, computing center and the other for the, um, yes, for, for the consumer. And on top of this, we have not North Rhine Westphalia related, but project related uh, layers with a maybe specific design or additional functions. So because every ministry or every department has um, specific uh, or unique challenges. And um, so we are developing this on layer four and it is uh, closed source to this um, NRV Gov. I will show later if I show the department of the interior website. So I think I have done the big picture and now the technical details will be shown by Raul. Okay, I will share my screen now. Yes. If you want, so. I think this is a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Okay, I will. You should show now the presentation. Yes, I see the presentation. Okay. Okay. Um, we will start. Well, what is this? Is that right, Philip? Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we will start uh, uh, seeing the technical details, uh, um, starting from the uh, last uh, layer model that uh, Philip already presented. So, uh, how is the interaction between the different layers we presented in this model? So, we are working on the uh, layer four at the project level. And uh, there we can um, use, we use NRVGov for, for the development of our projects because all of them or most of them are based on the, reg on the region. And therefore we are using this profile for, uh, for developing the projects. Um, at project level, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, some requirements that maybe uh, are um, developed as in form of a module and this module is used in this project. But we can find this module really interesting to be used in another projects, then uh, this module will be integrated in the layer three directly in the NRVGov distribution. In this way, we, uh, we put a, the availability of this pro of this module for all projects based on NRVGov. And uh, step forward, if we find this module so really, really interesting, or it's a requirement that uh, can be integrated in DEGOV, then we develop a module specifically for DEGOV, uh, or we migrate the module from NRVGov into the DEGOV. And this module uh, will be part of DEGOV in the next release as a 30 part module. Or if the module at some point becomes part of the core, we are already in the layers one and two. Um, this module um, is finally uh, part of the core of DEGOV and um, must uh, must fool the requirements uh, to be integrated uh, like uh, um, security code standards and so on it uh, will work with together with drupal core modules uh, and another modules that really uh, are needed for the for degov to work so then we are going now to see how this uh, how degov is more or less uh, prepared. Oh. OK. 
okay. How is prepared and the configuration management of uh, the configuration management of the Gov doesn't differ much more from from the Drupal ones, and. Uh, um, it's very important to maintain the consistency between deployments and uh, to provide the ready to use functionalities that DevOps offers. And by using uh, the usual commands, Drust, CIM, and Drust X, uh, can the configuration be exported? At this point, uh, the modules uh, uh, the modules provide um, on configuration uh, skills or, or configuration functions. And uh, so that this configuration can be in an easy way uh, for uh, managed. For this reason, we added some extra modules to manage partially imports of configurations so that the new modules can use uh, uh, them to rewrite, replace, or merge the needed configuration uh, with the existing one. It's done normally with uh, update hooks, and it's an you know, it's an easy way that the developers can extend modules or add new modules um, to the to the to the existing ones without breaking the uh, backwards compatibility or the existing configuration. At this point, uh, obviously, we uh, deliver uh, the distribution the distribution with a composer composer JSON file that. Uh, uh, List or relates uh, all needed modules uh, needed to to work the egg off, and the composer JSON of the profile must not be changed because uh, the next update will uh, rewrite this composer JSON file, and uh, the changes introduced uh, are going to be overwritten. Uh, therefore, if uh, someone needs to add another extension, another module, then it should be done in the at the project level in the composite JSON file of the project in which the profile has been used, for example. In DayGov, uh, uh, in the in the DayGov uh, distribution are all modules, um, all modules uh, um, ready to use. And uh, we try to maintain DayGov as quicker and faster as possible. Um, and uh, also it contains a lot of modules and not all of them are enabled at the, at the time of the installation. And the installation has been divided in steps and uh, each step can ask the user uh, for installing uh, a module or enable a functionality that uh, comes integrated in the egg of. Uh, for this reason, we use the profile file in the in the prof, in the profile itself to prepare uh, throughout the the functions uh, the task functions to prepare the different steps uh, that are executed uh, during the during the ex, during the installation of the of the site using the drag of profile and uh, we know that the configuration of responsiveness uh, in Drupal is not quite easy. And uh, we are providing in the, this, in the DegOff uh, distribution um, a basic responsive configuration so that uh, the user can enjoy it directly after the installation. And we provide a crop module uh, during the installation. It will be installed and uh, configured in order to provide uh, this uh, responsiveness behavior for image media in general. So now we are going to see a little bit behind the scenes what uh, is happening uh, during our um, development workflow. And um, it starts uh, checking, checking out a branch as usual from the development um, for the development on a new feature or for the fix or back or something else that we need to integrate in DegOff or, or develop in DegOff. And uh, after that, and all tests are locally executed. And so uh, when all tests passed in the local in the local environment of a developer, then starts the continuous integration step. We push the data into, into the Git repository using Bitbucket, and uh, this time uh, started a pipeline in Bitbucket. This pipeline um, tried to test, or we are 
we, we try to test uh, not only the feature itself uh, or the fix, but uh, the integration and backwards compatibility. So unit tests, functional integration test, and uh, regression test are executed during the during this pipeline execution. And uh, when the pipeline ends successfully, then yeah, then started the continuous deployment um, step. We open a pull request to let other other developers uh, to test the functionality and we follow the four eyes principle. That is uh, the pull request must be tested but by at least two developers, others than the, the one that developed the functionality. And if the test is correctly, the pull request is merged and the pipeline is executed again uh, during the deployment, executing all kind uh, of tests, uh, including BHAT tests, uh, functional unit tests, and so on, so that we are sure that the integration in the mind branch, in this case, development or master branch, are su is successful and no nothing was broken during the deployment or the integration of the new functionality or the fix of the bug. So, as uh, as it was said uh, by Philip, um, we have a height, uh, a height, um, sorry, a height uh, security requirements, and uh, we we develop uh, we develop sites for the government, and uh, it requires that all such heights measures have been taken be before a site can be can go live therefore um, our dagov implements the drupal security advisory policy in order to be sure that all security uh, issues can be covered and uh, um, the reaction can be as quick as possible as fast as possible so um regarding versioning Yet now we are we are using the same versioning uh, the same versions uh, as Drupal use uh, in order to maintain the things as easy as possible. They go follows the Drupal core versions. So this is our versioning model. And uh, for example, uh, they go for eight dot. At 8.5, uh, we'll use the Drupal core eight. Point five and so on. And then the last version we are uh, developing, we are uh, developing now, or we are preparing now, is the Drupal Noi that will that will be shown later. Uh, but the, the 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 new version for the day of will be Noi will be Noi uh, for sure because the Drupal core Noi. Uh, no, it's is already uh, is already released. So now we are going to see a little bit more in detail on now uh, from the point of view of the user, of the users what's inside Dagov. As we mentioned uh, before, uh, we deliver the functionality of Dagov in form for of modules and. Uh, a lot of modules of functionalities are ready to use after the installation. 80% of, uh, of them are exported configuration from the site builders. So a module behavior, that means that a module behaviors can be changed in an easy way. Simply changing and exporting the, its configuration, um, you, can change the, you can change the behavior of the module on your site and you can configure it in an easy way and export it uh, for using for using it in another site, uh, the modules provide to manage partial configurations. Will take care of this uh, of this new configuration and will replace or merge the configuration depending of the case. The next time this module will be installed, this uh, import export of configuration configuration will provide uh, out of the box the the previously configured module uh, that you have has, uh, has used before. So it's an easy way 
to migrate uh, sites or to provide, sorry, or to provide uh, um, the configuration. So one of the modules uh, you can find in our DAG of distribution related to content types, uh, we provide uh, out of the box content pages, uh, uh, press relays uh, uh, to write articles, events, uh, and so on. And uh, more interesting thing is the media types we provide uh, uh, ready to use uh, and uh, it uh, um, are not only uh, images or videos or so on. So we are providing uh, a kind uh, of uh, central media management in which you can find, um, for example, uh, addresses uh, or contacts uh, in form of uh, media assets that are already prepared to be used or to be integrated in a paragraph or in some other um, page or content type you are um, going to develop to prepare for showing uh, information. You can see a small uh, muster of, of this uh, of these media assets that are prepared to be used. And another thing we integrated in DGOF is the uh, management of YouTube videos, uh, YouTube and video and Vimeo videos integration. We haven't, uh, uh, we, ha we have uh, developed a simple way to, a simple way to embed uh, YouTube and Vimeo videos. And uh, we have joined the upload of the videos because we don't uh, find, uh, we don't find needed uh, that the, the upload, uh, uh, we don't find uh, that the upload of a video uh, should be separated. So in this way, we are managing the videos in the same way. And internally, the modules that uh, take care of the multimedia management um, use a widget or another widget in order to show the video on the page. So we are going now to see a small demo of the of a project of uh, a project of the Ministry of Interior, and I will uh, I will give the the word to Philip. Yes, thank you very much, Raúl. And uh, now we will see a little bit of real world example of our system here. So this is the website of the Ministry of the Interior of the State of North White Westphalia. Yes, it's a long name of this ministry. And um, we have this page design. So we have the facet navigation, the media management with a search on the left side. And this is a custom theme we developed for this ministry. So it's based on the EGOV. So the whole back end is the EGOV. And one layer above, we have the NRV GOV. As, you, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with this layer model. And above of this, we have um, basically this theme, this NRV GOF theme. And um, this is the special project for the Ministry of the Interior of North Rhine Westphalia. And it consists of this um, different parts. I don't know if you see my mouse cursor. Uh, we have on the top side this. Um, different different uh, top level navigation points here and on the left side i think the media management is the most important and as you can see we support video pictures and so on and so on um, as different articles here and of course a uh, very powerful search engine here on the left side where you can um, search different media types uh, different articles after the date and uh, yes, different headings here. So as you all know, the in Germany, we call it DSGVO. Uh, uh, it's a law basically for um, data protection and data security. It's an European, uh, European, European law and we um, added this uh, settings, this cookie 
and data security and protection settings out of the box here so that the ministry don't has uh, to to add this uh, every time if uh, there is a new website so uh, as Raul mentioned earlier, we have this media and entity management here. So you have the possibility uh, in the back end of our system to add different media data and add different articles here. And we have the, the possibility to, uh, yes, to get uh, or to, to give a, a title and make this uh, thing um, searchable here. So maybe this a little bit to our media management. And yes, we are bootstrap based. And as you can see, this is our back end. So we offer something like a, what you see is what you get editor. So you can, um, you can change the text and make small changes if you are an editor um, in this view. So you go to the website and then you go into edit mode. And if you are in the edit mode, then you can change the design a little bit, the texts. And yes, as we are bootstrap themed, our bootstrap based, um, there is the possibility to make this whole website responsive and um, you are able to view this on your smartphone or in, on your tablet and so on and so on. And this is the most modern thing here. And um, yes, I think this could be interesting. And now Raul is talking about what comes next here, what comes next in this uh, DEGOV and NRVGOV world. And I uh, hand over the presentation to Raul at this moment. Yes, uh, so wait a moment. Yes. Am I sharing the screen or not? You're not sharing. Okay, wait a moment. Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. I am not sharing. Sorry for inconvenience. Yeah, now. So, no, no, uh, no, we no, don't see anything. Yeah, no, no. Yes, <laughs> now we see the presentation. Okay, so what comes next? So um, the first one is the, to see the Drupal 8 end of life and the new uh, coming Drupal 9. So at the moment, uh, we are finishing the update of the GOF to use uh, Drupal uh, 9. It means uh, we have removed a lot of update code. We have removed some modules that are now part of the DEG of core and some other modules which functionality is now in Drupal uh, core. So we have uh, cleaned and reduced the uh, volume of the modules that, uh, um, that uh, DEG of uh, um, offers, but we didn't reduce the functionality. That is really important. And um, but we have uh, a lot to do. We have a lot to do, uh, and uh, we are planning now a new approach. Uh, and it's uh, the couple, the coupled uh, day golf. It means uh, we we are going to try to develop the coupled modules uh, with less dependencies and more flexibility to be used and to be integrated. Another thing we are planning to integrate is uh, planning to integrate or maybe uh, a little bit better set is the improvement in accessibility and uh, in all of all our projects is the accessibility an important aspect for the go life of the site. Um, our sites must pass the test of the um, web content accessibility guide uh, we measure with the high note as possible, and uh, most more important is the approval of the German law for accessibility called BITV2, which are really strict 
So it has been improved in the last versions, but uh, more improvements will come with the new versions because we noticed that uh, we already have some lacks and some problems with this uh, with this um, area in our website. And another improvement we are planning to introduce uh, for real time SEO. We have checked uh, some Drupal org modules which can provide this functionality and it, they work really good. And we are uh, thinking about inclusion of this kind of modules that can be really helpful to detect uh, uh, problems with the SEO and the positioning of the websites uh, throughout the indexing machine machines. And uh, last but not least, uh, an improvement uh, for the backend editors and for the administrators is the inclusion of uh, measures or modules like coffee that can be the life of editors and administrators a little bit more easy. So, that is what uh, we are planning for now, and uh, most probably the, as I said, the, the coupled, the coupled version of Drupal of our, our modules is taking now the most of our time to plan how it can be done and how 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 it can be um, in any way uh, prepared to be um, to be implemented, and now. I'll let Philip to finalize and thank you very much. So, yes, then let's broaden our view a little bit and take a look at what others are doing with our the EGOF uh, or with Drupal. And this is very interesting because Drupal is commonly, commonly uh, used under. Um, different uh, in different portal pages uh, in many different countries. So, uh, as you see, we have, for example, this uh, USA Jobs Gov. These are basically government jobs for the USA state government. So, this is based on Drupal, and um, I think it's interesting to see what the other countries a little bit. Uh, over over the sea are doing here yeah? or maybe healthcare gov it's from the uk government so you can uh, you can enroll your health insurance here and get information about your health insurance and even this is based on drupal and a few more distributions here you see uh, on the right side the australian government is doing things with drupal um Gov CMS, it's called uh, the AGOV distribution for the Australian government too. I think this could be interesting. And then we have this open public and DIMPACT uh, thing here. So uh, maybe it's, it's uh, interesting to see a little bit what the others are doing with Drupal here. So and if our mission convinced you, then maybe this is interesting for you. We are hiring and we are, of course, hiring people who know Drupal and who, uh, who, who want to work on this mission to make the digitalization and the e-government systems better here. So maybe this could be interesting. And then I think we are right in time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry for the technical difficulties <laughs> at first. And if you have questions, then don't hesitate to ask them. And as I don't see the chat at the moment, I think uh, Raul has to mm -hmm. monitor it a little bit and ask questions if there are, yes. are any. Okay. No questions? Uh, yes, there is a question there in the chat. Uh, do you know of people using Dago outside of Germany? Uh, not as I know. So the EGOV is basically really customized for the needs and the unique challenges of the German government. So 
I know that there are different distributions based on Drupal, which are, um, which are used, for example, in Austria from the government or in Australia, a little bit more far away. And um, yes, this is based on Drupal. I think the EGOV is really um, a sole German distribution. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, um, okay, another question. I think this is for me. <laughs> so, uh, what kind of modules would you recommend to use when creating your own installation profile that will make it easier for a developer? So, I know the config devil module. Okay, yes, um, config devil module for a developer is a bust module that uh, always uh, must be enabled uh, during the development. And other modules that I personally personally used uh, during my development is Tweak Tweak. Tweak Tweak helps uh, the developer to output uh, variables and different information directly on the Tweak templates. And it's uh, a little bit, um, from the performance perspective, better uh, than Kint or or uh, another internal uh, dump uh, um, functions. Uh, um, it replaced to the dump function of Symfony um, to be a little a little bit more performant, uh, and uh, it doesn't require xdebug to be enabled. Uh, so, from my point of view, it's another module that uh, man that you have to consider uh, during the development. And uh, another modules is the, uh, are, for example, uh, Devil, Drupal Devil. Uh, I'm not sure if you are referring the same config devil, but um, Drupal slash Devil is another module that uh, have to be installed during the development in order to provide some debug functionalities or uh, some another um, some of their functionalities uh, really useful for the developments like Kint or another um, kind of, of functions. Um, Tweak X debug, it's another module that I normally use uh, for my, uh, during my development. Uh, it allows to set breakpoints into Tweak templates and so on. And uh, a module that I really love since I discovered it, is uh, Tweak Var Dumper. Tweak Var Dumper, it's another module that allows, ah, sorry, I have, uh, I have uh, said it wrong. So Tweak Var Dumper allows to <laughs> output um, information into, into, te into templates like dump functions uh, without having Xdebug enabled. And the first module I, I called uh, Tweak Tweak. Tweak Tweak provides uh, functions to render block views or or uh, another kind of uh, objects in a easy way. So using uh, um, functions like uh, Drupal view and then um, putting into into parentheses the name of the view you want to render. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a shortcut for some functions. Um, to render uh, to render different objects, blocks, uh, views, or or another another um, component in an in a easy way, like paragraphs too, and so on. I think it's a, a good module to to use not only during the development but uh, already for use uh, directly on the on the website. And uh, well, not not more my side i think this module so devil uh, tweak x debug and uh, maybe coder and are the most uh, used from my part uh, the most used modules uh, to during the development and tweak by dumper the other ones are related to testing so we had php unit php stun and so on are uh, third party extensions but i i recommend this uh, this uh, two three modules for the development okay uh, philip 
Yes, yes. I think this is a question for me, uh, more the <sighs> business side here. Uh, okay, uh, how does the EGOV compare to the competitive solutions for the Germany, uh, German government? Is it a strong player? Yes, we have in Germany a special situation here. Um, we have this uh, different, um, different departments of Germany, like North Rhine-Westphalia, and as public plan is based in Düsseldorf, we are really, um, really, really um, focused on North Rhine-Westphalia at the moment. But the open source strategy we are driving as public plan is considered as uh, as as really good from other departments. So there might be the possibility to go over um, over the borders of North Rhine-Westphalia. But at the moment, we are a very strong player in North Rhine-Westphalia. And um, yes, we try to go a little bit broader and more far away out of North Rhine-Westphalia and maybe international. That's uh, the case why we are doing this talk here at the moment. So if you are interested in more information, I would say, um, okay, my colleague is wearing a Corona mask. That's interesting. Uh, if, you are, if you are interested in um, more information about this topic, then um, don't hesitate to ask us. I will send my email address in the chat later and then we can provide you with further information to this topic. So, so don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. Okay, great. So my colleague switched its place. <laughs> uh, you are muted. But I think we are done now. Sorry, I, I, I don't have, I don't have any uh, charge in my computer, and I need to connect them, connect it to the drone. No, so. no problem, no problem. I think we are done now. So yeah. If you have any questions, uh, then don't hesitate to ask us or me uh, over my email address, which I just posted into the chat. And then I would say, can you write? Can you write my address? Oh, my address. If I would knew your address, then I would write it. Uh, wait a moment. Moment. I have it. Yes. Yeah, as, a, as Philip said, they ask Greg to make or something, you need something from, from us. Thank you very much for your attention from my part. And that's all. Thank you very much. And I would say I wish you a very nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.